Hi, this is Professor Serge Lessert. Here's an interesting problem. We have four types of cargo to be loaded in an airplane. The cargo has the following attributes, weight, dimension, and profitability. The plane itself has three com cargo compartments constrained by capacity and weight distribution. And this is so that the airplane can fly safely. So the question becomes, how much of each cargo should be loaded into the airplane that will maximize profitability for the firm and yet meet the constraints of size and weight distribution? The premise here is that if this problem can be visualized as a network, then it is solvable using linear programming. Here we have a visualization of the problem as a network diagram. The cargo is the source, the compartments are the destinations, and the arcs are the constraints. Here we see the problem formulated in mathematical form. Note that the objective function is to maximize profit, subject to constraints, available cargo, weight capacity of each compartment, space capacity of each compartment, and weight capacity proportion of each compartment. Oh yeah, this is so complicated you might say. Well, it can be. However, in this short video, let's examine a much simpler problem to introduce you to the graphical method of linear programming. Looking at the available production capacity, there is 240 minutes or 4 hours of electrical assembly time available and 100 minutes or a little bit more than 1.5 hours of mechanical assembly time available. There can be several reasons for limited assembly capacity. One can be the people with the right skill set and a second can be the available time such as work shift. Each headphone requires a certain amount of time to put together the mechanical and the electronic assemblies. It requires two minutes of mechanical assembly time for headphone one and headphone two requires one minute. We see the corresponding electronic assembly times for each headphone. So now we structure the problem in a network diagram. The source is developable capacity for each resources. The cost arcs are the required manufacturing times. And the destination is the product itself. As this problem can be described as a network diagram, it can also be solved using linear programming. Formatting the data in a table structure provides an opportunity to prepare the mathematical formulation and define the objective function as finding the production mix that will maximize profits subject to the resource constraints. Finally, we now state the problem in mathematical form. Maximize 7x1 plus 5x2 subject to constraints 1 and constraint 2. Constraint 1 is the electronic assembly and constraint 2 is the mechanical assembly. Because we have two variables, x1 and x2, representing headphone 1 and headphone 2, we can provide a solution using the graphical method. Next, we will plot the constraints and identify the feasible region. To employ the graphical methods of linear programming, we need a simple graph paper as shown here. The axes are labeled for each product, X1 for headphone 1 and X2 for headphone 2. The corner is represented as 0, 0, and each line on both axes are labeled in increment of 10 units. Examining the mathematical form of constraint 1, we see that when x1 is equal to 0, 
then x2 is equal to 80. Also, when x2 is equal to 0, then x1 is equal to 60. We finally draw the corresponding line. Likewise, for constraint 2, we see that when x1 is equal to 0, then x2 is equal to 100. Also, when x2 is equal to 0, then x1 is equal to 50. Again, the corresponding line is drawn. The gray shaded area is the feasible region. It represents the boundaries of constraints 1 and constraints 2. It is important to understand that we cannot manufacture 60 units of headphone 1 because we are bounded by the available mechanical assembly time or constraints 2. Similarly, we cannot manufacture 110 units of headphone 2 because we are limited at 80 units by the assembly of electronic time or constraint 1. These constraints are sometimes referred to as the bounds recognitions of a problem. The next step in the graphical procedure is to examine each corner point of the feasible region. From the feasible region, we can identify the corner points. These corner points are written and read as x1, x2. The feasible region is bounded by four corner points, and we have already identified three of them. 0, 0, 0, 80, and 50, 0. Next, we need to identify the intersection point where the two constraints meet. The technique to use is called simultaneous equations. There are two methods to finding a solution for simultaneous equation. The substitution method and the elimination method. Let's look at the elimination method. We are going to multiply equation 2 by negative 2. This will make the magnitude of the coefficients of x1 the same in both equations. Equation 2 is transformed as shown here. The coefficient for both x1, when added together, equals 0, thereby eliminating the variable x1. We are left with variable x2, which is equal to 40. When x2 is equal to 40, and substituting x2 with 40 in equation 1 will result in x1 being equal to 30. So now, all four corner points have been identified. The next step then is to substitute each corner point into the objective function and determine which of the corner points results in maximizing profits. Each corner point value of x1 and x2 is substituted in the objective function. Let's start with corner point C, where when the substitution is completed, results in a profit of $400. Performing the same procedure to corner point D results in a profit of $410. Corner point A results in $0. And finally, corner point B gives $350. Corner point D is the point where profit is maximized. The firm will then produce 30 units of headphone 1 and 40 units of headphone 2 in order to maximize profit.
In conclusion, note that the graphical method does not always result in an optimal solution at the intersection point of the constraints line. Keep in mind that the graphical solution works since we only have two variables, x1 and x2, the headphone products in this case. This example makes use of only two constraints, but we can have three or four or many more constraints. Clearly, in such a case, the solution would be different. Finally, YouTube has many examples of linear programming graphical methods that it will be very worthwhile for you to search and take a look at.